Hello, everyone, and welcome back to The Letter, where a lizard has uh, taken over my it's, computer monitor, which is going to make the rest of this playthrough pretty hard. Uh, it's our third member of our group, if you might have noticed him a few times. He hangs out over here with me, usually. It's true. Keeps us uh, keeps us on track. Yeah, he's a, he's a taskmaster. Yeah, except for right now, when, you know, he wants us to get going, but I can't see the screen. That's a problem. <laughs> uh, you, might, you might have to tell him time is money. Yeah, it's true. Time is money, friend. All right. So we... Oh, you disturbed him from his home. <laughs> All right. So we had a decision to make. <laughs> he was helping us with the decision, it really, was, is absolutely. what it was. He was taking it off the screen for us so that we could uh, work it out on our own. All right. So I think... <laughs> you said he helped you, so... It's true. All right. All right. All right. Here, here's the answer. Two. All right. The lizard says two. We're going to go with it. That'll be our new system going forward. <laughs> That's really the person. Oh God, this is why we have to do it between episodes because the lizard tells us which, uh, which like one. like the magic eight ball of the show. Pretty much. <laughs> All right. So let's see. <laughs> Sorry for the trouble. I recognize this concern for what it is. Oh, we did good. It's not new for him to go out of his way for us, and to be honest, that is what I love about him. As much as I would have loved to take this off his hands, it'll only be selfish for me to insist, considering he knows my, of my other commitments. To do so feels like I'll be trampling on that kindness he seldom offers to anyone. Sorry for putting you up to this. Nah, don't mention it. You've got other things you need to worry about. Take care of those first. This is a small thing. I still owe you one. Oh, I can name a few things you can do about that. You know, mm. there's this ice cream shop that opened oh. here at the movie house. I could use... Okay, let's stop right there. That's enough. Buy him an ice cream. Um, yeah. second thought. Maybe I'll just think about it some other time. Harsh. <laughs> we both laughed. The sound lighter and more comfortable. Like the old days when a wayward 26-year-old is at the bottom of the list we need to worry about. What? What? <laughs> I don't understand. Is that Isabel? I think so. <laughs> this is how we find a common ground. We may not agree on a lot of things. We may see things the way the other we may see things the way the other does, but the give and take is something we've learned to get used to over the years. Hey. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I'm lost. some of these I can't tell if they're just like grammatical error like if they're yeah. errors in writing or if I'm <laughs> missing something. Or it's just I'm pretty sure this is a British publisher. No, maybe. If it's just the way they write or slang over there or oh, it could be whenever it's like this confidence in him is the least i can offer his thanks really thanks for this ash i'll let you know what happened afterwards i promise I'll where's my ice later. cream you have a good day yeah ice cream i admit the way he puts it isn't comforting enough he can be blunt like that so many unknown variables so many words left unsaid i wish he'd simply lay them out all in the open because like this i'm more inclined to think there's an exaggeration on the other's part if it's from zachary ashton i don't know in the end, all I can do is wait, go about my day, and hope for the best. Before leaving, I spare Isabella's room one last glance, disturbingly quiet now without her in it. I'll get answers from her later. For now, my concerns are best left here. The rest of the day slips away in a blur. Despite my best efforts in keeping this morning's events from surfacing in my mind, it sticks. In a way, everything today simply feels like a reminder. Every conversation, regardless of how casual, every topic, no matter how mundane it seems. I blame the news entirely for this. Recent happenings brought quite a few interesting stories to everyone's attention, mostly superstitious talk uh, of death. That's what I was like, is it the Isabel thing or is it the yeah. a ghost trying to kill me in the car thing? You know, a little from column A, a little column B. And when locals talk about death here, anyone can sure as hell count on someone bringing up that mansion Isabella sold not a few weeks ago. Even my own students won't stop yapping about it. I think it's even worse than when it was put back up in the market. Now, there are more stories. If this is the world reminding me of what matters or simply because the atmosphere around this time of year calls for it, I'd rather take the latter. At least then I can be sure people will forget about it in favor of another set of holidays after. Nevertheless, and this may be a painful thing to admit, but listening to them is a pleasant distraction while waiting for Ashton's call. I hope he doesn't forget. The school day is about to end soon. Oh, that's got nothing with what I heard. Ooh, what? What? What's the rumors? I don't know. Why that isn't this voice? <laughs> oh. You always hear stuff. I'm not sure half of it them's even real. No, really. Rowan knows about it. He used to be in the same class with them. That's Rowan. I can hear you from back here, you know. Whatever, Rowan. 
Anyway, the story goes like this. There were three of them. They entered the mansion on a dare, and oh, they were all never the seen again. Oh, and that actually happened. No one knows what happened to them up to this day. That was the video Scary thing we saw. Cock and bull story. No, oh, now she's voice. Now. No, you don't get it. Why don't you ask the scales then? Better yet, why don't you go inside no. the place? I'm betting my allowance. You can't do it. Well, no. okay, let's completely ignore the fact that it's owned by somebody yeah, else now. Correct. You can't go in there. Like, people actually live there. Their talk immediately halts when I look up, all of them suddenly pretending to be engrossed in their current activity. Still, a word to put a stopper to this nonsense, nonsense is needed. Creativity and imagination fostered by these stories is one thing, but reckless ideas should be corrected before anything potentially tragic comes Back from it. Back to your worksheets, everyone. And I don't want to hear any talk of dares or going inside that mansion. It's private property now. You'd all better stay away from it before... Da, da, da. At the noise, the whole lot of them go silent. You can almost hear a pin drop. The look on their faces would have made for a funny picture, but that's irrelevant at the moment. If that is a student loitering around, someone's going to be in trouble. I'll be back. If you're done, you can leave your worksheets on my desk. Keep the noise to a minimum while I'm gone, okay? I can sense their eyes on me as I walk out the door. A muted kind of anticipation. A bit unnerving, but it's far more agreeable than the feeling of being watched I've been enduring these past few days. Class is still in session for most of the rooms. In a few hours, once the final bell rings, however, this place will once again be filled with busy chatter and footfalls on everyday cycle in itself. But for the moment, I let the silence guide me, my ears focusing on whatever sounds there are or there will be, searching for that distinct clanging of metal. A good minute passes, and for the portion of it, my only steps echo only my steps echoes through the halls. And another. I'm about to turn around when the sound of it halts my footsteps. It's a little muffled and infrequent, but grows louder after each interval. With the hallway devoid of people, if I don't put a stop to it soon, it'll start to disturb the other classes still going on. Looking for it doesn't take long. All I do is follow the racket, and shortly I'm standing in front of a nondescript row of unoccupied lockers. And from inside one of them, sitting in the middle, comes the noise, annoyingly disruptive now that I'm facing it. Like someone's pounding on the metal door from inside, hoping to get out. Leaning forward, I try to get a glimpse through the horizontal slats of whatever is causing it. But in this light, only darkness greets to me and another round of clanging. Louder than the previous one. More desperate. I've heard stories before from other schools, from a few colleagues who had to deal with it once or twice. Although personally, personally, I've never encountered one myself. I can only thank heavens I haven't yet. But... If this is another kid, some other student stuffed in a locker. With a huff, I straighten up and study it briefly with a frown. Without delay, I reach for its handle and... At once it stops. Immediately replaced by a muffled sound of a mobile phone ringing. I give the door a few taps before taking my attention away. A second. Another. When nothing or no one responds, I finally avert my eyes and pull out my mobile. Ashton vo Ashton's voice greets me from the other end of the line, oddly cheerful in light of this morning's matters. Or maybe because I'm just expecting some grave or serious news from him. Instead, I get this. Hey, well, you sound happy. I do? My voice still sounds the same to me. There are only two things I know of that could be the reason for that tone. Sweets, or he's gotten a good lead in his case. From the sound of it, I'm going to assume it's the former, since lately, that case is all that's running inside his head. If there's ever a third one, I've never heard of it. Yet. It can only be one of the two. Hey, ignore that. How's Isabella? Already home. Sorry I didn't get to call you earlier. I had to head to the precinct after. That's alright. Is she okay now? I... I'm not really sure. She didn't say anything to Zach, but she mentioned a plan to take a few days off from work. It was a passing comment before I left her, so I didn't get to ask. Must be because of Rose's death. Could be. It doesn't seem like it from Zach's story, though. He said she was shaking when she got there. Shaking? The word triggers a memory. From three days ago, on the way home from her little treat after she sold the mansion, I didn't think much of it at the time, but I won't lie, it scared me. The terrified look on her face, how she sounded when she suddenly screamed. Okay. Oh, yeah. that's when she saw it I, in the, the I window. I just remembered something. Uh, sorry, don't mind me. Yep. Look, if you can talk to her, get the story out of her. That would be great. She wouldn't talk to Zach or me even when I tried. Maybe she'll speak up if it's you. I'll give it a go, but I can't promise anything, okay? You know how stubborn she can get. But thanks for letting me know about this. If you want, I can get you that ice cream thing you mentioned. Tonight? As thanks. Just as thanks for all the trouble I've caused today. Believe me, I'd love to take you up on that offer, but I've got something on my schedule this evening. Maybe some other time? Sched Thanks a lot, Becca. Never heard it said that way. Schedule? Sked? It's on your sked tonight. 
Yeah, no, I've, I think I've heard that like in TV shows. I haven't. <laughs> I'm getting old. I'm not keeping up with the slang of nowadays. I don't think it's actually used nowadays. I think it's like pretty dated at this Is point. It? There's a short pause before he cuts the call from his end. And once again, I'm alone with my thoughts. Rather than answers, all I got from it are questions. More of them on top of the other. As if the world isn't planning to give me a break anytime soon. But that's a problem I'll tackle later. Right now, I've got students who need to be taught follies of eavesdropping. If the slightly open door and their smothered laughter from inside is an indication. All right. Enough eavesdropping. All of you, back to your seats. Is that your boyfriend, Miss Gales? None of your business. He totally... Oh, wait, that... He totally is. A quick scuffle follows that comment. If there's a retort prepared at the tip of my tongue, I drop every pretense of letting it loose on them. There's no use arguing with teenagers sometimes, boisterous as they all are. They're still my kids, though. Rough around the edges, maybe, but still my kids. All right, before the end of this game, either Ash X... Isabella out or she asks Ash out. One, one of these two things yeah. needs to happen. Question of the day, which one are you rooting for? Shaking my head, I head back to the, my classroom with a smile, but not before taking a glance at the locker again. Who are you rooting for? We don't tell yet. We can't paint. Because he doesn't know. Mm, no, I mean, I guess, all right, fine. If we're going <laughs> to look what you've done. See, see, I helped. Uh, I'd probably go Ash to Isabella. Uh-huh. Same. All right. Now that we've painted your opinions. And it might be mostly because I'm just not a... Not a big Rebecca fan of Rebecca. fan. Yeah. I think that's part of it. Hasn't made a sound oh, since. Must be the wind. So without another look, I leave it alone. <gasps> okay, wasn't expecting blood on the lockers. <laughs> Check. Wait, All right, did she then. turn around and then there was blood on the lockers? Yeah, I don't understand that. Huh. All right. All right. All in all, the entire school day ends without a hitch. It could have gone better, mind you, but with the exams nearing, getting out of work before the sun is set looks as though it's far off, a far off dream now. At least until they're over. Then we have the holidays to look forward to. There really are times when you simply take what you can get for the time Nothing being. Nothing wrong with that. All I'm hoping for is this will continue until the whole day ends. There's still that promise I made to Ashton, and frankly, the idea alone doesn't sound good. If Isabella didn't talk to them, what makes me think she'll talk to me? It's not like there's a hierarchy, is there? Just because I can handle Isabella's childish tendencies doesn't mean I can do it all the time. Really? Those two give me too much credit. Nevertheless, I'm keeping my fingers crossed, if only because I'm also worried about her. And both Zachary and Ashton deem it important enough that somebody get the story out of her. Here's to hoping it's got nothing to do with that letter, again. You're wrong. Yeah. I understand she feels a bit stressed lately, but keeping that story going on for more than a week is... It's bound to get tiring at one point. Seriously, I merely don't want this to end in another argument. God willing, the cafe's special will help smoothen things out. After all, it's always been food with her. Or money. But mostly food. <laughs> at this hour, the cafe is usually filled to the brim with people. That's the reason Isabella and I rarely go here during the evenings. It's simply too much of a hassle when we can prepare food ourselves in the comfort of our homes, and there really isn't much reason to eat out lately. What with life going on a busy streak. Not, no time for long lines. Better spend that doing something productive, yes? Lucky there isn't one tonight. Only a few people are idling around the counter. Four of them, in fact. A woman in her 60s, a teenager busy with his phone. Both are just waiting to be served their orders. Oh. Wait, what? This is interesting. Uh, not a group... I expected to get together, but whatever. The other two, a posh-looking man and a child who I immediately recognize as Kylie, appear to have not yet picked anything they want. For some reason, my stare lingers at the guy. Though dressed relatively well and looks harmless, I haven't seen him around these parts before. Is that his kid? From another affair? Looks nothing like him, though. No. Someone new in the neighborhood, perhaps? <laughs> Even so, there's something familiar in him. It feels like I've seen him somewhere before. It also begs the question of why Kylie is with him. Of course, the girl easily takes a liking to anyone who buys her sweets, so it's both a bit worrisome and unsurprising. The blonde bloke doesn't look particularly thrilled with the company, though. I tear my eyes away from them soon enough once the guy at the counter appears ready to take my order. And I'd also hate to be accused of ogling strangers. Hey, evening special. Take out. He's already punching the order before I even finish. Saying my order out loud is really more of a formality's sake and made out of habit. He has known Isabella and I long enough that if we ever drop by here, he already knows it's always because I'm buying dinner for the two of us. 
I rarely visit here alone if I can help it, but Isabella can sometimes be a bad influence. He gives me a small smile before leaving to prepare my order while I fish for my, my wallet when- Look, you little ankle biter. If I buy you the biggest parfait they have, will you please, please behave? I would just like five. No. Ten minutes of peace and quiet. You said you'll get me some bread pudding this time. This time? Yeah, well, darling, they said they ran out of it. What? Just pick another one so we can be on our way. Their parfait doesn't look as cute as the one my mom bought me. Oh, lordy. Parfait is just ice cream, sweetheart. It'll melt no matter how dainty it appears. In the you end, it'll have no time for children. <laughs> You talk about how this ice cream is magical. Oh. What? Does he, so, all right. I'm assuming he has a secret family. Uh -huh. And that's why he's away all the time. But remember when we were playing as Hana and we had that one choice and one of the options was like to drop the subject or to say like, oh, you'd be a good father. Uh -huh. This is probably why that was the correct answer. That's probably why he wants no more children. Well, that too. Because you have so many illegitimate children. Oh my god. Now come on, just pick one. It could even be the most expensive one on that list. I don't give a shit. Care. Ooh. I don't care. Oh, what I would give for someone to buy you off my hands. What? No. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Dude, I've hated you this entire game, but now Man, you're He like is like sinking himself so low. Which whiskey. honestly is impressive. Whiskey, oh whiskey. <laughs> Bratwurst. Bratwurst. What? My whole attention instantly snaps back to them in their conversation. Jumping to conclusions isn't something I'm particularly fond of, especially when all I have are baseless assumptions, but you can't really trust a stranger these days. No one around the cafe seems to have noticed his words either. Very suspicious words. Still, I don't move. Yet. But my hand is, has already shifted from my wallet to the book I'm carrying. A hardbound textbook. Looks harmless, but if the situation calls for it, it might be a good deadly weapon. <laughs> Might. I haven't gotten the chance to try it anywhere so far. Today could be the day. Do it. But you promised. Look, if you don't want a parfait, how about how about a bonafide pie? I'm sure it'll taste just as good as any other bread pudding. I'll even buy you the entire tray. Also, how since he's sound? so like rich and famous, wouldn't anyone notice him out with a kid? Yeah, I was gonna say he's like he seems to be fairly well known. I wonder if that's like, yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. That's not what you said before. Well, sweetheart, adults change their minds sometimes. <laughs> you said if I come with you, you'll buy me a bread pudding, and I did. And now you won't keep your promise. Wait, what? You said if I come. I want to go home. I miss my mom. Oh, she doesn't like him. Nope. Oh. Nope. So I think that's why he's so frustrated. No, darling, if I remember correctly, and I have a good memory, honey. What I said was, if you come quietly with me, I might buy you oh one. Oh my god, dude. You are the, the worst. Part didn't happen. Though now that I'm sober, I think this is a bad idea. I should just ship you someplace else for that peace and quiet. Oh, that's it. No yeah. hesitation. In a few paces, he's within my reach, and without warning, I'm slamming the flat area of the book against his skull. <laughs> Good job, Becca. <laughs> All right. She gets points. Yeah, I was gonna say, she's gone up. There's a cry of pain followed by him instantly crouching down, hands nursing the sore spot. Although I think that is technically assault. <laughs> uh, yeah, and he can sue your ass for yeah. anything wrong. Almost comically, if this were a different situation and the safety of a St. Goretti student isn't at stake, I'll probably feel sorry for him. I mean, has anyone seen how thick this book Get is? behind me, Kylie. <gasps> Miss Pink! It's amusing how fast her expression changes from the pouty one earlier to something that of utter delight upon seeing me. But there's no time for any pleasantries, not even quick ones, because soon the man straightens and I'm writing my favorite newfound weapon for another hit. <laughs> Is she gonna hit him again? We'll just have to find out in the next episode. This, this maybe my Becca redeeming quality right here. This this might be outside of the horror parts. This might be my favorite part of the whole game. I know. <laughs> I have to say, Luke is a bratwurst, but every scene with him is just just magical. Yeah, just so magical. He's like the perfect idiot. He, yeah, he he needed to be in this game <laughs> for the just for the the comedy that comes from him. Being a bratwurst. Being a bratwurst. 
All right. Anyway, that's going to do it for us. As always, thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.